banks, you know, stock uh, brokers, uh, different manufacturers, they will designate systemic risk companies or banks. And if you're designated as such, then that means you're too important to ever allow you to fail. Well, once you do that, the government's going to bail you out of any hole you get in. And so it allows you to run your competition out of business because you can run a deficit because you know the government will bail you out. And there's also those businesses know that they owe their lives and livelihood to the government. I mean, it was really Machiavelli in the way these auto dealerships were just flat, unconstitutionally taken well, Congressman, away let's, let's, let's talk about that right now for networks. Okay. I'm going to skip this network break and take our guest to the bottom of the hour. Stay with us. Some stations uh, will, uh, uh, but that's a network break, so I can take it. Congressman, now, uh, revise and extend your remarks about the, the auto dealerships. If they're yeah. inside cronies, if I've seen this correctly, Congress even admits it, then they get to keep their dealership. If not, they may have had it 85 years. It's yeah. taken away from them with their customer list. So this is highway robbery. Uh, go ahead. It, it, well, it is because it allows you to completely or they to completely disregard the takings prohibition in the Constitution. It allows them to disregard the um, well, the, the bankruptcy laws. You you can't just come in and say you you don't have a chance to submit your own alternative plan. And uh, you're going to have a chance for motion for relief from stay. You're going to have all these opportunities. Well, they found a lazy bankruptcy judge, had the auto task force dictate what would happen, and we could never, even in Congress, because enough people are not demanding transparency, we don't even know what they discussed. But anyway, they put a bunch of people out of business, decided which dealerships. Now, they say we didn't designate individual dealerships. We left that to to GM and Chrysler, but the fact is, it, it is so Machiavellian, even if they're friends or enemies, you take dealerships away from some, take property away from some, just like the old Dukes, and you give it to others, well, the ones that have it now know that you can take it away from them just the way you did the other guys, and so everybody becomes immensely loyal to the prince, as Machiavellian. Uh, Machiavelli talked about it. And so that's what we've seen here. It, it is a seize of power in this country on an unparalleled level, and it scares all these businesses. So you're able to call in banks like you were talking about and say, you either sign this or we're going to basically have the regulators take over your bank. You either sign this and give us wants to buy stock in your company or we're going to run you out of business. And, and uh, you know, then the president, goes on television and says on the auto uh, bailout that, gee, these uh, we've got creditors who are more concerned about themselves than they are about America. Good grief, they're concerned about the rule of law, and the rule of law says if you're a secured creditor, then you have priority. They flipped that upside down and then had the unsecured creditors like the UAW get ownership of the company, and the secured creditors were willing to take pennies on the dollar based on the fact that the, that the president was coming after them and going to use all his, his power to take them out of business if they disagreed. It, it is really frightening what's going on. And, and you, you wouldn't be aware of this, Alex, because it just happened yesterday, but ever since there has been a Congress, there has been you know, a great political debate back and forth, fussing and fighting. Well, in the last two and a half years, they've changed the rules. They've said you can't bring this. They won't allow amendments on, uh, on, on so many bills. They bring them straight to the floor. They don't go through committee. And, and so, but what happened yesterday was we have been battling this socialist health care, the nationalization of health care that is going to absolutely kill uh, senior citizens, they'll put them on lists and, and force them to die early because they won't get the treatment as quickly as they They're need. They're not even letting you do mailers now. I've noticed all the rules are changing. They won't let you read okay. bills now. Oh, so, man, that shows how on top of things you are, Alex. Yes, we cannot talk about, if we use the term government-run health care, then we have to pay for it out of our own pocket because that's, that's too political. Go on the speaker's website. She just chastises Republicans, bad mouths them, as political as it gets, 
But, uh, you know, that stuff has gone on. But then to come in and say we can't send out the chart reflecting the new 31 entities created by this socialized medicine, and we can't say government-run health care unless we say the term public option health care, they will not let us send things out, um, you know, and be on our website. It is censorship like I would never have dreamed would happen. Well, I mean, I've been watching C-SPAN since high school, and I thought I'd learned some of the basic rules, and suddenly everything's operating differently. In fact, I want to right now play a 30-second video clip of you during the cap-and-trade saying, may I see the 300 pages? And this went on for hours as they said, oh, you can see it, but it's not up here. Uh, just incredible. Here it is. To figure out what we're doing, how much damage the country, I tried to get a copy of the bill. We have out here on the table 2454 that has 1,090 pages in it, but I've understood since debate in here that there's another 300 pages that were added in the middle of the night. My inquiry is, how do I get a copy of the other 300 pages that people on here, on here uh, or here on the floor I hadn't had a chance to read or see? Where, where do we get that before we slam this, cram this down on the American people? And she won't answer. <laughs> well, she's actually leaning over and listening to the parliamentarian because she's not sure. In, in fact, back that up. She goes back and then, and then answers. She says, oh, it's there, but it's not. Here it is. Go ahead. Go ahead and play it, guys. The amendment is printed in the Rules Committee report. In the Rules Committee report. And, Madam Speaker, uh, where would I get that report? The rule was passed earlier today. Rules, I'm sorry. I the rule was passed earlier today. Rules passed it earlier today. The rule was passed earlier today. Right. That says, basically, we're going to the floor without everybody being able to get a copy in the Speaker's lobby as normally required. The gentleman is not asking a parliamentary inquiry. Well, right, that's enough. It goes on for hour after hour, but the point is they wouldn't let you read it, so I guess that's why the minority leader, when he finally got a copy, had to do a leader <laughs> filibuster, I guess that only leaders can do, uh, in the yep. House and, and, and tried to read through it. Yep, that's, that's right. He had had some staff trying to help get through that thing and find things that were a problem. And uh, it, it was just incredible the stuff was in there. But even on the bill itself, you know, it, it was obvious people had not read the, even the 1,090 pages that were available because they kept getting up and saying, this isn't going to cost anybody jobs. What is, all this bad mouth is not going to cost jobs. So I took them to the page, 900 and stuff, and they said, look, you need to read your own bill because you've created a climate adjustment fund in here. It, it, it says right here, I read it to me, that if you lose your job as a result of this climate bill, then you're going to be probably, possibly um, open to an allowance that we'll give you. And then if you flip over another couple of sections, we have a climate adjustment um, relocation fee. But unfortunately, it doesn't allow you to relocate where your job goes to China or India or Brazil. And so I was pointing those things out. And they're saying it doesn't cost jobs. And I said, whoever staff or wrote this bill knows there are going to be people whose jobs. And I finished by saying, so I guess the good news for all you guys is that are, that are supporting this thing, when the American public finds out what you have done to them by passing this bill, many of you are going to get voted out. And the good news for you is you may be entitled to a relocation allowance and allowance for for losing your job because of this bill. <laughs> well, Congressman, uh, in in closing here, maybe I can hold you over, but I know you're on a, a busy schedule. There's just so many questions I wanted to get to. What about Obama saying there's no anti-Second Amendment bills and we're conspiracy theorists, when last time I checked there were more than a dozen that just like the climate bill gives all these agencies the executive power outside Congress to just raise taxes, home inspections, force you out of your house, that's in there, as you know. Uh, saw it discussed in committee. The gun yep. bills allow him to put you on a no-fly list if he doesn't like you to not be able to own a gun as well. Uh, allows him to ban any guns he wants. I mean, they're saying they don't want our guns, but the attorney general argued in the Supreme Court last year as a lawyer 
for a total gun ban. I mean, what's going on with that? Well, it, it is absurd, and uh, it is a violation of the rules of the House for me to, in debate, indicate that the president has not been honest or that any member of Congress has not been honest. But I was able to point out, without violating the rules, that whoever is putting the stuff in the president's teleprompter that he's reading, they're not being honest. And the poor president's reading this stuff, and apparently he doesn't realize that it's not honest. But we need to find whoever is putting that stuff in his teleprompter and make sure they start telling the truth. Uh, bless his heart, he just reads what they give him, and it's not always <laughs> accurate. Congressman Louis Gomert, let me, let me say bye to you here off air uh, as we end this segment. Okay. We really appreciate you coming on. And when I come Thank back... Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for coming on, sir. When we come back, I'm going to plug your website and contact info. Stay with us.